Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I want to say sorry for taking so long to come back with a new video. December was a very hard month for me and then just after New Year's, uh, I got the virus that I cannot name without YouTube losing their mind. I made a post in my community tab if you want to learn a little bit more. But yeah, basically my life has been a mess and I have not had the time or energy to do a lot of work. But don't worry, I'm back with this video and I have another huge video in the works. Uh, before I start, I do want to say my voice is still a little fucked up <laughs> from being sick. But I'm trying my hardest, so I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little off. Today we'll be taking a look at a girl group who debuted back in 2020 and then kind of just fell off the face of the earth. Some people who haven't looked into the situation might just think that the group disbanded, but in reality there's a lot of dark allegations, bad choices made by the company, and a lack of accountability. So let me tell you the story of Bodo Pass. In early July of 2020, Double X Entertainment and WKSENE or WKS Entertainment announced that they were going to be debuting a new girl group with eight members. The group was set to debut in August of the same year under the name Bodo Pass, short for Born to Be Passion. The group consisted of members Soyeon, Che Sang, Ji Won, Ria, Mihi, Harin, Shiho, and Ayun. The members of the group could speak four different languages, those being Korean, English, Chinese, and Japanese. The eight girls were under two different companies, some being under Double X Entertainment and others being under WKS Entertainment. Bodopas had their debut on August 26, 2020 with their single album Flamingo. <laughs> The song didn't do amazingly, only peaking at 71 on the Gun album chart and had around 620 album sales. However, their debut did gain some attention, but not for the best reasons. Before I can explain what happened around the debut of Bodo Pass, we need to have a look back in 2019 when another girl group debuted. In late April of 2019, a girl group called I Love debuted under WKS Entertainment with the song Got It. Now, this group has a lot of pre-debut history, but it's pretty confusing, and for the most part, it doesn't really touch on the topic of this video, so I'm not gonna go into it, but feel free to take a look at it after this video. The debut lineup of I Love consisted of five members, So Yun, Che Sang, Ga Hyun, Mari, and Dayeon. Just a few months after the group's debut, WKS announced their Dream and Challenge project. To make it simple, through this project, the company would be choosing the members for I Love's next comeback. Apparently, to make it fair, not only did the trainees have to fight for a spot, but also the existing members of I Love had to fight to keep their spot in the group. At the end of this project, three new members were added into I Love, those being Mina, Jiwon, and Jiho. But like I said, the already debuted members weren't safe either, and only three of the girls made it into the comeback lineup, those being Soyeon, Gahyun, and Che Sang. Mari and Dayeon were basically kicked out of I Love after their debut. The group had their first comeback on November 11th, 2019, with the song Open the Door. <laughs> Just to go over the group lineup again, it had three original members, Soyeon, Gahyun, and Che Sang, and three new members who had won the Dream and Challenge projects, those being Mina, Jiho, and Jiwon. However, a seventh member ended up being added into I Love, that member being Soyeon. She was not in the music video, however, she did participate in the group promotions. This kind of made me wonder why two members from the original lineup got kicked out through this dream and challenge competition when another member was just going to be added after the whole project was over. 
Well, so you might be thinking, how do Bodo pass and I love connect? Well, after the group's comeback of Open the Door, it seems that the group disbanded, as in July of 2020, WKS Entertainment announced that they were debuting a new group, and that the group had some of the same members that were in I Love, those being Soyeon, Jiwon, and Che Sang. This connection would be the reason that Bodo Pass's debut was tainted by rumors of vicious bullying. Like I mentioned before, a member called Mina joined I Love in November 2019 and promoted with the group for the comeback Open the Door before taking a hiatus from the group to focus on health issues. On July 13th, 2020, Mina made a post on her Instagram where she opened up about mental health and her departure from the company. She said, quote, Thanks to my lawyer, I was able to terminate my exclusive contract with the company. I want to thank my fans, friends, and family who have been supporting me and worrying about me. I was taking a break from my activities due to depression, panic disorder, and insomnia, and I want to thank you all for the supportive messages and fan letters. They gave me so much strength. I also want to really thank my lawyer for making me happy. Now I'm going to go back to my original self. My psychiatrist told me, you have a healthy personality that doesn't require any psychiatric help. You are a person full of passion for your dreams. You didn't do anything wrong. When I heard those words, I cried a lot. I agree with what my psychiatrist said. I too know that I did nothing wrong. As I am writing this, I feel very happy. I want to thank my composer Yoon Sang Jo for giving me many lines in the good song Open the Door, even though I may have been lacking. Thank you for giving me the unforgettable happiness. I want to thank our teacher Ko Young Won, who made the choreography for Open the Door, for often giving me warm compliments. I had a hard time with depression, panic disorder, and insomnia, and I was able to heal with song and dance. I want to thank my teacher Young Pei Gyu for always listening to me worrying about me and giving me warm advice and consolation. You appreciated my skills and taught me many things. I will be healthier and return to my old self. I will continue to be active in the entertainment industry. I will never give up on my dreams. I will continue to be active in the future. I hope everyone reads this will be healthy and happy. End quote. After this first post by Mina, a fan supposedly reached out to her in DMs where she talked about her struggles with insomnia, loss of appetite, and then she mentioned that she felt sympathetic towards Mina from AOA. Now keep in mind this was back when Mina had just told her story about being bullied by her co-members of AOA. This is when the fan asked if Mina from I Love had been bullied in the group and Mina confirmed that she had in fact been bullied both mentally and physically while in I Love. Mina, I hope this is an innovation, but fans are worried the members took part in your bullying and pain. Is this true? Yes, I'm so scared of them. Do you mind asking which members? I don't want to support anyone who would inflict such pain to someone. Everyone. I'm so sorry you went through this, Mina. I've been bullied in my life too, and no one deserves that. Thank you for telling me. I can't imagine supporting a person like that. I'm so scared of them. It made me suffer. How long did you endure the bullying? About six months. I see you're still following Gaihyun. Is she the only member who didn't hurt you? She's the same person. Every member was involved? All six? I can't even imagine that. You're so strong. Yeah, it was the whole group. I had a really hard time. Mina also posted the same day in her Instagram story where she said, Those who have bullied and made me sick will be punished later. She also posted another Instagram story where she said, the perpetrators don't sneak a look at me by secret Instagram. I can't forget the face when she was cursing at me, spitting cigarette smoke, lying that her grandfather was in critical di condition ahead of a comeback and traveling with her boyfriend. My wrist still hurts because she pushed me. She worked secretly at an entertainment bar at dawn. The smell of alcohol was terrible. While this was all coming to light, apparently Bodo Pass's Instagram and Twitter accounts were blocking people who mentioned this in the comments. However, this was still just Mina speaking up, until a fan contacted some of the members from I Love. According to Nuku Promoter, a fan contacted a former member of I Love called Gahyan. Via comments, she said that she wasn't sure what was happening, but that she knew that Mina had been bullied and that it did indeed happen. But she said that he, she herself had never been involved. After a fan revealed her DMs with Mina, Mina made a follow-up post on July 15th, 2020 saying... I posted a message two days ago and a lot of people contacted me. Thank you so much for your concern. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I haven't replied to everyone yet. It is my first time my phone has been ringing nonstop with calls and me messages. Many people are asking if I ate and if I'm okay now. 
I'm still unable to eat. I currently weigh 36 kilograms. As for how I'm doing, I don't know. One thing is I can tell you is that I got a call from the company asking me to keep this a secret. I don't know why I have to keep it a secret. Shouldn't you apologize? I want to receive an apology from the people who gave me a hard time. They're probably watching this secretly. Think about it if you have a conscience. I'm dying. Is that what you want? For me to die? I think you're watching this secretly. Don't hide. I'm in enough pain right now, so please don't bother me. End quote. From what I can tell, this post has been deleted from Instagram. I think the reason why this was taken down is because of the fact that Mina said that the company was telling her to keep quiet, or as she said, keep this a secret. The same day this post was made, Mina uploaded a video to her YouTube channel where she revealed that she had tried to take her own life the day before, but had been saved just in time by a police officer. In the video, she thanked the police officer and also confessed she was struggling and begged people who were attacking her to stop. I also want to mention before we keep going, to this point when Mina started speaking up around July 12th or 13th, depending on the time zone you follow, the Bodo Pass member lineup hadn't even been revealed. So at this point, fans only knew that there was a possibility of I Love members being in the group, but no one knew for certain. Following the two different posts made by Mina on Instagrams, the multiple story posts, and the DMs between her and a fan going online, WKS finally spoke up saying, This is WKS e and &E. We would like to express the agency's position on the false information about Mina being harassed by all six members of I Love. With rumors of verbal abuse and assault circulating recently, we realized this could seriously damage our agency's artists and the former members who are finding their own path. So we decided to give an explanation on the matter. Mina has been a break since January for health reasons. The agency wanted to give her a chance for a new project, but she stated she needed more time to recover, so we allowed her to extend her break. It is unfortunate that such an incident has occurred in the this situation. WKS, e and &E, and the six former members of I Love want to make it clear that her claims are not true. For some reason, Mina is refusing to meet us, but we read on her social media account that she is suffering from mental illness, such as severe insomnia, so we tried to refrain from taking further action while hoping her health would recover. The six members are shocked and hurt by the one-sided and absurd claims made by one person who is stating that she is experiencing difficulties with mental health. It is especially puzzling how she can accuse a member who had not lived at the dorm with her. Nevertheless, we have no choice but to take separate legal action to protect our artists from the actions that continue to spread groundless content and damage the image and reputation. Also, we would like to ask you to please refrain from writing speculative articles or malicious comments based on unconfirmed information. And if you post something due to a misunderstanding, we would appreciate it if you would voluntarily take it down. We apologize for the delay in response. The agency needed to confirm the exact facts about what Mina claimed before expressing our position. Thank you. The statement was very odd to read, especially parts like, we would like to express the agency's position on the false information about Mina being harassed by all six member members of I Love, or WKS E and E and the six former members of I Love want to make it clear that her claims are not true, or or this one, the six members are shocked and hurt by the one-sided and absurd claims made by one person who is stating that she is experiencing difficulties with mental health. Because days before, when Mina first spoke up about this on July 13th, before the statement was made by WKS, one of the members of I Love Themselves, Gahyun, took to Instagram to reply to comments where she confirmed the bullying had taken place. However, she said she had not taken part in the bullying. It also feels off that the company is basically hinting that her mental health issues make her an untrustworthy person. On July 16th, after the first statement was made by WKS e and &E, the news outlet OSEN published a news article about the situation where they hid quotes from a representative of I Love. This person said that Mina's claim of her contract being terminated were not true and they followed up with saying, quote, Mina's solo album was being prepared for at the company. During the process of setting up Bodo Pass, the I Love members were fairly given a chance to audition, so we tried to complete the group again. Mina was also offered the opportunity to audition, but she didn't take part because of her health issues. So the company was also thinking about Mina's solo album. The representative said that they had tried to reach out to Mina after her first post, but that she had refused to meet with them and told them that they had to talk to her lawyer, which they said they did, and that they had asked Mina to, quote, no longer defame and spread false information about the members, end quote. 
Later the same evening after the Osen article was posted, Mina posted a screenshot of horrible DMs she had gotten from people, where the sender seems to be saying horrible things and even telling Mina to go die. She followed this screenshot with this message. Do I have to die for this to be over? Will you finally believe me then? I wasn't going to post on social media, but I kept getting angry over the news articles about me. My depression, panic disorder, and insomnia came about after I joined the company, and they were caused by the members. Everyone in the company knows. Everyone knew that I was having a hard time because of the members. He told me not to work until the fall. I never heard anything about a solo album. Stop lying. And don't message me over cacao talk using informal speech. We don't know each other now, but you're rude, so I'll move on. Should we disclose the certificate of contents? Can you handle it? Do you think I'd sign the confidentiality agreement you sent me? Why am I not allowed to tell my own story? Are you afraid of what I'll say? You send me a confidentiality agreement because what I'm saying is true. I'm powerless and I cannot put on my own articles either. So the only place I can tell my side of the story is here. I almost died and now I'm not scared of anything. For your information, Soyeon is mentioned in the news, but it's not Soyeon. I never mentioned her. On July 22nd, Mina ended up responding to the company's dispute, and this is where we get a lot of he said, she said kind of stuff, and it can get a bit complicated, but I'll try to make it as simple as I can. As I said, Mina spoke up on the 22nd of July, when Star News published an interview with her. In the interview, Mina revealed a lot more about her experience, saying that she asked the company for help, but they did not listen to her plea, even saying that she had a recording of the conversation that she was willing to share in case this went to court. She also said, quote, The agency says they're going to file a criminal complaint, so I'm waiting for that. They can do as much as they want. I'm confident, end quote. She speaks more about why she spoke up, saying, quote, I just at least want to know why they harassed me. If they apologize, then I think I'll feel a bit better, even if it doesn't help completely. But it seems like they have no intention of apologizing at all. End quote. She speaks about how upset she is and says, quote, I feel like I'm going crazy and every day seems like hell. End quote. She says that she has plans to seek help for her depression, panic disorder, and insomnia, which is very good to hear. Someone from WKSENE said to Star News that it was all false and followed by saying, quote, There's a lot of evidence, such as videos and messenger conversation from when I Love members were promoting for almost six months. It doesn't appear that she could be called a member who was harassed. End quote. After the article with Star News went live, Mina took to Instagram to answer what the company had said. She said, quote, I haven't even begun to reveal anything about the members, but it seems like the time for me to now reveal what the agency CEO did toward me. These members even searched my own phone. What kind of fools would they be if they left evidence on, on their cacao talk? I always had to reply nicely and act like we got along. It seems like you don't have any evidence about me. You're not filing a criminal complaint and just talking instead. End quote. She posted this in her Instagram story and even tagged the company in her post. The same day or the day after, again, time zones can be weird, the agency spoke up on an episode of an E! News exclusive where a source from the company spoke up. The source said that they had talked to the other six members of I Love and no bullying had ever taken place. Which, again, is odd when at least one member has publicly confirmed the bullying. The company source then said that the members had said they loved each other every day and got along well. Mina's lawyer also spoke to E! News on this episode. When the show asked the lawyer about the fact that the company said no harassment had taken place, the lawyer said, quote, I've looked over the evidence that Mina has gathered. As a lawyer, I thought, if this went to court, it would be acknowledged. Therefore, I think the agency's claims aren't true. It seems to be true that she is harassed since she was a trainee, end quote. There was also three different screenshots from Kaka messages provided between members, and I'm assuming this was provided by the company. In the first screenshot, we see Mina thanking a member and calling her Ani after the member congratulated her on her birthday. Another member says, quote, you're someone who deserves to be congratulated, let's be happy, end quote. And Mina then follows up by saying, I was really happy today, end quote. Mina responded to this on her Instagram by sharing the same screenshot and tagging one of the I Love members, that member being Jiwon. She then says that these messages were from her own birthday back in August of 2019. She then says that back then she did not live in the dorm with the girls and hadn't even signed a contract with the company. She then says, quote, in short, these messages have absolutely nothing to do with this matter, end quote. 
A second screenshot from a Kako message was shown in the episode where the members are having a conversation about groceries. Then further down in the screenshot, we see, we see Mina say, I love you, and other members reply with emojis, and one says, quote, you're cute, my love, end quote. To this, Mina shares the screenshot again from her side and tagged Jiwon once again in the post. Mina then says, quote, these messages are from December 6, 2019. I share a room with this member and she was always forcing me to do Egyo, recording it and harassing me, end quote. For those who might not know what Egyo is, according to Google, it is a cute display of affection often expressed through a cute voice, changing to speech, facial expressions, or gestures. Mina also says, quote, she harassed me by, by making a Mina Egyo compilation too. On this day, she was telling me to do Egyo, but then when I didn't do it, she got mad, so I was calming her down by doing this. Why would I love her? so terrible end quote the third and the last screenshot shown on the episode was mina sending a message to other members saying i miss you honey and the member then replies how are you feeling the top bunk is lonely because you're not here mina then replies i started feeling a lot better i'm feeling lonely too honey the member then says, that's a relief. When can you come back? I miss you. The last part of the conversation is Mina replying, saying, I'm planning on going in the morning. I brought all the clothes and makeup I need for the recording studio tomorrow. I'm going to prepare everything and then go to the dorm. Mina then once again posted this chat from her perspective. However, according to Sumpi, the screenshot Mina shared from the text were slightly different with the differing wording and additional messages that said stuff like, quote, come back soon until you do i'll be keeping the hostage with me end quote now keep in mind that the post that Sumpi shared in their article with a different text is not in the article anymore so and so far i haven't been able to find it but if i do i will put the two different screenshots on the screen <music> Mina also tagged another member in the third screenshot, this time the member being I loves Jiho. Mina gives her side of the text saying, quote, these are messages from December 2nd, 2019. This is the day after the member's birthday. I had gone to the emergency room and then gone home because I was feeling very ill. The hostage she mentions here is my favorite doll. She would always hide it without telling me and on that day she took it and called it a hostage, end quote. Mina also says, Quote, as soon as I got back from the emergency room, she came up to my bed and harassed me by pressing down on me to keep me awake. So I felt worse and went home. I knew what would happen if I didn't answer her nicely, so I always did so. She was someone who put together a collection of my ego, so I always did what she said, end quote. After this episode, WKS e &E made a statement on the 23rd. It is pretty long, but I'll still read the whole thing for you. Hello, this is I Love's agency, WKS a &E. We are releasing an official statement about the issue of a former I Love member, Mina, which was covered on the July 22nd broadcast of SBS's E! News exclusive. All of Mina's claims, which are currently circulating on YouTube and social media, are false. The former six members of I Love have received a serious shock that affected their physical and mental health to the point of vomiting. We intend to file a civil suit against Mina. None of what Shin Mina has said is true. The agency, the members, and their families are deeply upset by this injustice. Because of one person's false statement, many people are suffering and being hurt. The agency thought of Mina as family, so we plan not to respond in order to keep the situation from getting out of hand. It was because we were worried that she would make a terrible decision again if her true self was revealed through our response. But she kept sharing her posts, and these posts spread throughout Korea and abroad, and we became the target of unspeakably abusive language as a result of misunderstanding. The former I Love members are having a hard time, and the soon-to-be Bodo Pass members were also experiencing severe stress and nausea, and we decided we had to issue a response. Currently, we have received the typical certification of contents to cancel a contract from Shin Mina. 
but the contract has not been terminated. She is sharing her story through DMs, direct messages with her fans, and those fans are spreading the story on social media. The agency has stated that her stories are false, but she continues to make her claims by using fan letters as proof of bullying. According to members' testimonies, the members found out about Emina's insomnia after she told Suyeon that she was suffering at the end of November and the beginning of December. In mid-December, Mina's father requests that she commute from home instead of the dorm because of her serious atopy and a childhood trauma in which a thief robbed her home. The following is her response to Mina's claim about the harassment. She said that she was directly harassed by the other six members, but this is far from the truth. There were no members that were on bad terms with Mina, and the members took care of her and were respectful of her. This is a shocking and painful thing to say. As an agency, we cannot forgive spreading a story like this. She also started something absurd about the youngest member, who was in her teens. In a conversation she had with a fan in DMs, she said the member in question drank often, slept with men more than 10 years older, and went to nightclubs. There was only one one younger member than Mina on the team and she was a minor. Now that she's being treated as an immoral person even though she's only 19 and not yet a legal adult. Gaihyun, the member in question, said, I was the only person on the team who was younger than Mina. I'm a minor and I cannot go to nightclubs. I really did not go to those places. I don't know how she could spread those stories through Twitter and DMs with fans. My younger sibling heard what she said through somewhere else and I'm scared that people will know me as that kind of person. It is so hard and I want to die. This is not just about the youngest member. All of the members members are being painted as a, as a gang of immoral people, claims of sexual harassment, claims that the members forced her to watch videos of sexual intercourse. We are furious about these claims. This did not happen. Mina said that she had never dated and often expressed envy of the members who had boyfriends. She asked the members of several questions about dating and the relationship between men and women. There was never an incident in which she was forced to watch videos of sexual encounters or had her clothes taken off. Mina was the type to engage in the kind of teasing where you touch and pinch each other's sensitive areas. She would often touch the other members' rears and, and put her own rear on other people's hands and posing for photos. Some members told her clearly that she did not want her to do this, but there's also members who put up with it as not to hurt her feelings. The members did not sexually harass Mina, but rather put with her own embarrassing behavior. Mina had made it seem like she followed all the rules while the other members went out as she pleased and did whatever they wanted. The agency gave members free time when their training time was over. The agency was aware that members, including Mina, would sometimes go out without permission. However, the life of a trainee is difficult and frustrating, so it was something we turned a blind eye to. This is not a frequent occurrence, like Mina said. The members are in serious state right now because they have been made into not only culprits of bullying, but also painted as people who engage in verbal abuse, sexual harassment, excessive drinking, staying out all night, and harassing their colleagues. The following is about the fan letters that have been presented as evidence of harassment. Mina said that she had found a fan letter sent to I Love Fans in the trash, suggesting that the members looked down to their fans. This is not true. On January 8th, the agency delivered the first fan letters to members. Mina was on break starting January 6th, so the members expressed their gratitude through photos and videos without her so as not to be late in acknowledging the fans. We can still vividly remember the I Love members' happiness at receiving the fan letters. The fan letters in question were not directly addressed to Mina, but the team in general, so the members discussed who would get to keep them. The letters were put on a wall in the room that, that Mina and Chie Sang shared. The members all knew about this. They were not very famous at the time so they did not get many fan letters, but they treasured the ones they received with gratitude. It is absolutely false that she picked them up from the trash. Mina arrived at the dorm on January 12th to pick up her luggage. The cleaning woman empties the garbage every day, so if they were tossed in the trash, they would have been gone by the time she arrived. Since they had been pasted on the wall before they vanished, we assumed that Mina had taken them the day they came from the dorm. The members are grateful for the love of their fans and treasure their letters. We have released a statement in order to prevent our artist's reputation from defamation through Mina's accusations. On the same day, we received a message that seemed to mock the agency. We will correct the parts that are not true. After claiming she was harassed by the six members, she changed her statement to say that she had not mentioned Suyeon. When the agency set the schedule for the second half of the year, we asked her to participate in an interview for the chance to debut in the new project, Botopaz. She said that she wanted to rest until the fall because she did not feel well, and we allowed her to work as a YouTuber as she wanted. However, we prohibited her from using official content related to the agency or about the members. She claimed that we contracted her to keep everything confidential, but that was about the termination of a contract. The confidentiality agreement was, was a written oath that was part of the conditions for cancelling a contract under the standard cultural artist contract. This is an article that was included when the contract was initially signed. It is a typical method for pr protecting the agency. 
artist, any agency's business interest. It was not designed to conceal the truth. The written oath, which was given as a part of the condition for cancelling the contract without penalty or provision, was invoked after Mina posted false stories about harassment in order to protect the Isle of members and their personal information. We cannot understand her behavior in rallying up the masses by claiming that someone called her to ask her to keep her secrets. In a moment, the members have become labeled as bullies, a 19-year-old minor has been labeled as an immoral person, and the trainers who have been looking for a new path after being eliminated from auditions have had their feet tied before they can make a new start. The members who passed the audition fairly have also been deeply hurt by these stories before they could make their debut on August 4th. They are suffering mental shock, insomnia, and even nausea. This is a difficult situation for the agency staff and the members and the members' families. We cannot endure the situation any longer. We ask that Shin Mina acknowledge her stories are not true and issue a sincere apology to the agency, the members, their family, and their fans and return everything to normal. End quote. In a separate statement made by the company to Osen, they said that they would be filing a lawsuit either the same day or the day after. Osen then reached out to Mina for a statement and she said, quote, I am dumbfounded. I was also thinking of legal actions, so this hasn't changed my mind at all, but I'm just dumbfounded. End quote. Mina's lawyer also stated to Osen, quote, Opposition on responding to whatever legal action might be taking has not changed. Shin Mina has evidence of conflict with her members as well as the agency's negligence. The contract was terminated because the agency violated its duties. We didn't ask for their agreement. At first, the agency agreed to terminate the contract without penalties, but suggested a written oath to keep confidential about the conditions of the termination instead. Shin Mina did not agree to that condition. She said that she would not terminate the contract under those conditions. End quote. The same day, on July 24th, it was a announced that Boropass's debut had to be pushed back. Their debut was supposed to happen on August 4th, and in the statement the company made for their reason to this decision, they said, quote, Ahead of Boropass's debut, groundless rumors were being spread about I Love members who were a part of Boropass. The members from I Love and also other Boropass members who are preparing to debut with them are all having a hard time. Since we already released the schedule to fans, although it was difficult, we were trying to keep following our original schedule. The three former I Love members have become target of attack due to ridiculous claims made by a member who had been like family to them. And they, along with five other Boto Pass members who have dreamt together off their debut, are going through a tough time that is difficult to endure. The members are currently experiencing a great mental shock and it has led to physical symptoms. Please know that we made this decision because their treatment and recovery is top priorities. We have decided to deal with the judgment about the rumors in court, but we ask you to restrain from leaving malicious comments that sprout from misunderstanding. We will do our best to prove the innocence of our agency's artists while also presenting their fans with a great debut performance that will meet their expectations. Thank you. End quote. Along with the news of the debut being postponed, Mina's mother took to Instagram to let people know that Mina had collapsed and was taken to a hospital and admitted. On July 30th, WKS announced that they had taken legal action against Mina. A source from the company said, quote, Along with the I Love members, Gahyun, Jiho, Soyeon, Jiwon, and Chesang, WKS e e has filed a criminal complaint against Mina on suspicion of spreading false information and defamation, end quote. A few days later, on August 2nd, Mina's mother once again took to Instagram to give an update on Mina. She said that Mina was receiving treatment at a hospital and said that Mina was not allowed a phone or guest, so it took time for them to receive the news of the lawsuit. In the post, Mina's mother said, quote, I will say this again, my child never lied. I cannot forget the way my daughter cried every day and said that she was having a hard time, end quote. On August 14th, Mina made a post on her Instagram. I will read the most important parts that relate to this case, and the whole post will be on the screen. Quote, I'm not well known and in a difficult situation. The only way I'm able to let people know about my current condition is through social media. So I have shared posts with the last of my strength. But there are those who say these are lies, who rave against me by calling me an attention seeker. Is there a person who would lie to the extent that they would try to kill themselves? The agency called me a liar, but there is no lie in the fact that I have developed trauma insomnia, panic disorder, and depression from the members and from the agency. There are those who are asking me for evidence. The reason I haven't revealed it is because it was my last token of consideration for the members. I was afraid that they might make a bad choice if I reveal it, so I took it into consideration. All I wanted was a sincere apology, but it seems that I no don't need to be considerate anymore. I will discuss this with my lawyer. The group that I was a part of was only friendly on camera. I used the last of my strength to keep a bright image, even while suffering from assault, sexual harassment, sexual assault, verbal, 
sexual assault, random inspection of my phone, and being ostracized. The videos that the agency revealed were all from vlogs and they were involuntary. Everyone in the video was acting and we were not close in real life at all. I asked the CEO for help with the member several times but he ignored me. I thought about this while in the hospital for treatment. If the attackers are acting brazenly, then there's no reason for me to hide as the victim. I will soon update you on my condition through YouTube content that I had filmed earlier. I will say it again but I did not lie. I'm sure the members and the agency who read this have no intention of apologizing but the truth comes out. I will absolutely not accept false apologies. Live in your blood, sweat and tears. I will make you bear the price of making me sick and making my family suffer. I hope that this world in which victims have to hide while attackers live in honor goes away forever." End quote. Like I mentioned before, Bodopaz's debut was pushed back and the group ended up debuting on August 26, 2020 with her song Flamingo. Just a day later, on August 27th, Mina uploaded a video on her YouTube channel and I will play some of the most important clips for you guys. I told you that I was in the hospital in the 7th of the year and I was in the 8th of the year and I was in the 8th of the year and I was in the 8th of 그 사이에 고소를 당했다는 소식을 들었어요. 그리고 지금 드릴 말씀은 제가 일을 이렇게 되기 전부터 유튜브를 통해서 말씀을 드리려고 했었는데 어 제가 제가 유튜브 제가 유튜브를 하면서 단한 번도 회사 이름이랑 그룹 이름을 언급한 적이 없어요. 제 유튜브를 잘 보신 분이라면 아시겠지만 한 번도 언급한 적이 없어요. 그 이유가 초창기에는 계약 전이어서 제가 다른 회사를 갈 수도 있기 때문에 언급을 안 했던 거고요. 계약 후에는 너무 고통스럽고 힘들어서 어, 알리고 싶지 않아서 말씀을 안 드렸던 거예요. 음, 저는 너무 싫었어요. 솔직히 말씀드리면 정말 싫었어요. 그래서 유튜브를 통해서 단한 번도 말씀드리지 않았다는 점꼭 알아주셨으면 좋겠습니다. On September 9th, a news outlet Exports News reported that Mina had spoken to them, saying that she was still struggling mentally and that, that the agency had filed additional claims against Mina for allegations of obstructions of business and fan letter theft whatever that means. However, the company said that the claims were false, that they had not filed any additional complaints. They stated that the defamation, obstruction of business, and theft were all, all included in the original complaint they filed, and they said that the investigation was still ongoing. Mina shared a photo of a weight scale on September 8th or the 9th, saying that she had been working hard to gain back the weight she had lost due to stress. Also around this time, on September 9th, she posted some things to Instagram that worried fans. And according to the Seoul Mapo police station, they received a call just after 12 p.m. saying that a young girl in her 20s had been spotting doing what looked like attempting suicide. The girl was saved by a police officer and brought to her parents. The person in the police report was apparently a former girl group member with a family named Shin. After the rescue, Mina posted to Instagram where she said, quote, I won't do it again. I'm sorry to worry you. I, I really won't have bad thoughts again. Thank you for supporting me. I truly thank the people who rescued me today. Thank you to the fans who reported it, end quote. Basically confirming that she indeed was the girl who was saved by the police. She also shared a screenshot of the article about the incident, asking people to stop making malicious comments, and she also shared screenshots of hateful messages she was receiving. On December 8th, 2020, info about the legal case was released. A legal representative of I Love, and I'm assuming WKS, shared that on November 28th, the Seoul Jungle Police Station forwarded the case to Seoul Central District Court. At this point, views were divided. Some fans believed her story while a small minority did not believe her and kept attacking Mina. However, some proof did come out that supported Mina's case. Like back in August of 2020, photos of Soyeon, one of I Love's members with her boyfriend, got released. Fans pointed out that back when Mina first spoke up about the situation, she said that someone in I Love had been treating her badly and had lied about a family member being sick to go on a vacation with a boyfriend. The fans suspected that the person Mina had been talking about was Soyeon. After the news in December, the case went silent and not a lot happened for a while. On March 2nd, Nuku Promoter shared some info that another Twitter user had shared in connection to Mina. 
A video was posted where supposedly you could hear staff members talking about the situation. The supposed staff in the recording said that Mina was breaking rules of the contract and that she was going to be responsible for future risks. The anonymous person on Twitter then said, quote, Mina asked for help multiple times. However, the company says they did not know there was bullying. The transcript says different, end quote. Okay, okay. Ah, well, no, 그건 네가 판단해. 그래서 그 내가 네 친구는 그냥 네 꿈이 네 친구라고 했고 미래의 네가 친구지. 응. 주변에서 전혀 신경 쓰지 말라 그랬던 게 그런 일들이야. 그래서 그리고 그런 과정에서 네가 예를 들어서 그것도 못 하겠다. 오케이? 응. 그러면 계약해지는 있는 거니까 여기서 뭐 똑같이 말이라. 응. 해서 나간데 넌 다른 데못 가고 그냥 여기 묶이는 거야. 네. 이게 아니? 그래서 너는 그냥 네 길을 가도 상관없어. 근데 그거는 나의 너한테 자유. 그럼 뭐 아니면은 그냥 뭐 위약금을 하고서 다른 데를 가도 상관없는 거고. 응? 응. 내가 이제 해줄 수 있는 이제 그런 이제 부분들이 다 저기 진행이 그거야. 진짜 그만두고 싶다는 생각을 계속 했었는데. 응. 말로 꺼내기까지 몇 달이 걸렸거든요. 음. 결정된 게 뭔가 어떤 거예요? 멤버들. 그러니까. The same person on Twitter shared a video where an unknown person is recording themselves allegedly poking the mattress of Mina's bed, messing with her and annoying her. This person also shared text messages. The text said stuff like, cover your mouth when you sneeze, it's disgusting. I hate skinship, I'm tired. She keeps coming over towards me and hitting me. Should I go towards the end of the chair? Why do I hate this? Of course, everything posted on this account is only alleged, and I don't think everything should be taken at face value. However, it is still interesting, and this wouldn't be the first time the company statements don't match. I also want to mention that this account was sharing info and personal details that no one else had mentioned. So some people do believe that the person running the account is somehow connected to the situation. After a year from the original allegations of Mina, on July 23, 2021, the police chose to dismiss the accusations towards Mina. Mina took to Instagram posting a screenshot of her case where she said, quote, Hello, I'm Shin Mina. One year already passed. I waited the next day to write this. I heard the results and my legs are weak and I cannot stop crying. Thanks for giving me strength. Thanks for standing by me during this hard time and bullying. Thanks for believing in me and cheering for me. I'm very thankful, end quote. Now, some sources are making it sound like she won a lawsuit, which in a way, I guess she did. But in reality, the case was dropped, meaning that the police did not find enough evidence to actually go through with the lawsuit, meaning there was not enough proof that Mina, like the company stated, was lying. On July 24th, 2021, an interview with Mina was posted. There, she once again confirms that the charges against her made by WKS were dropped. She said in the interview, quote, Even though it was an obvious decision, it was hard for me because it took a year. But now that it's been announced, I'm so happy. Because I don't have an agency, there were so many false, unconformed reports about me in the news. But I feel like my name has been cleared by this result. I feel relieved. I keep getting emotional over it, end quote. She was also asked if she had any plans to take her own legal action, and she replied, quote, I haven't contacted my lawyer yet, so I haven't yet decided on anything. There's something that the agency said. They said that if it was revealed that their claims were lies, they would take full responsibility. I have proof, so I'm curious what they'll do. I don't want an apology, but I would like them to take responsibility for what they said, end quote. She then opened up about her mental health, saying that she was getting treatment and that she was also trying to exercise to become healthier. She also said that she was not going to become a celebrity again, that she had no interest whatsoever, and that she had made this decision back when she stopped promoting an I love. She also said that she was currently majoring in psychology, saying that she wanted to help people like her. She ended this interview by saying, quote, when I was still under my former agency, I was really struggling. 
but I realized that it's still worth living and that I shouldn't give up and I'm grateful for that, end quote. She then did another interview on the 29th and I'll put the whole thing on screen and I'll read some of the most important parts. There's also going to be a link down below if anyone wants to read it later. In this interview, she talks about how it was never meant for the DM between her and a fan to go public. She said, quote, My conversation with a fan became known on Twitter and my story that I did not want to bring up spread, end quote. She also said, quote, I made such bad choices and my story spread out of control, end quote. From what I understand, she knows that this wasn't the best way to address the issue, but she didn't know any better. She ends the interview by saying, quote, this is a very difficult situation. I'm really innocent and I've never lied before. The other side said last year that they would take full responsibility if their words were found to be false. Now that the results are out, I hope that you'll stop and take responsibility for everything, end quote. WKS slash I love did talk about refiling for the case or appealing it. However, I cannot find any proof of them actually doing it. Since there are so many names going around, I wanted to make a quick breakdown of all the people that were involved, both since it can be a little bit confusing, but also because I don't want people to attack members that had nothing to do with the allegations whatsoever. Not that I'm saying you should attack anyone, but you know what I mean. Now keep in mind that this breakdown is coming from the angle of Mina's story. Mina was the victim of bullying, while most members of I Love were the bullies. Soyun, Chesang, Jiwon and Jiho were the members of I Love that Mina basically confirmed they were bullies by either naming them or tagging them in specific posts. Gaehyun is one of the I Love members that were in a red area. She was the one who confirmed the bullying, but she said that she did not have anything to do with it. Mina said in a DM with a fan that all members of I Love did partake in the bullying. So from this angle, either Gaehyun was a bully or a bystander. Suyeon is not a part of the group that supposedly bullied Mina, as she did not live in the dorms, and Mina specifically mentioned that she did not mean her. She might have known stuff, but that's just my personal speculation. But all sites have said that Suyeon was not a bully. This was stated by Suyeon herself, the company, and Mina. The former members of I Love, Mari and Dahyun, were not in the group when Mina joined, so they are completely innocent in the situation. The Boto Pass members, Mihi, Shiho, Ria, Harin and Ayun are all innocent. They were not in I Love. Even two of the members, Ria and Ayun, were not even under WKS e e but from a whole separate company, Double X Entertainment. I felt like it was important to mention all these different people because some people just saw the word I Love, Bodo Pass, bullying, and thought everyone in Bodo Pass were bullies for in these allegations, which of course is not the case. I feel like it is important to mention the different people in this allegation as some of the people that weren't keeping up with this whole situation just thought that either all the members of Bodo Pass were the bullies or that everyone in I Love were bullies, even the people that left before me not even joined. So I thought it was important to break this down a little bit. Now don't get me wrong, there are people that do not believe Mina. No one but the people who are directly involved know the truth, so of course I can't guarantee anything. I will say that the people who are saying that Mina are lying haven't, from what I have seen, given any solid proof, and the same can be said with the company, because with the limited amount of proof the company has given, Mina has spoken on her side of the situation. There are some texts that I went over with you in the video, or videos where Mina seems to be fine, but, but as I said earlier, Mina said that those were completely staged, and we also do not have context for those videos. As someone who was bullied for years in school, no one really knew about my situation until years later. I would act like everything is fine, so I don't think a video of Mina laughing with the I Love members or random texts can be classified as solid proof that she lied. On top of that, the police investigation against Mina was dropped because they couldn't find enough information or proof that she was even lying about the members or the company. Now I do want to say that some of the girls have spoken out about the situation. I'm getting these translations from Botopaz Brazil on Twitter, so keep in mind that these are coming from a third party source. I will put the whole post on the screen and read the most important parts. Gahyun spoke of saying, Mina, I don't know why you're spreading false information. Enough is enough. We went to Lotte World together. We kept in touch during break. We have never bullied you. On what grounds are you spreading false information? Please stop lying. Apparently, Gahyun's mother also spoke up saying, quote, 
Have you ever considered my daughter's mind in this conspiracy? This is not true, and I dare not imagine. Gahi needs an apology. I don't know what Mina's intention and objective is, but I think it's desirable to just broaden suspicion and attract public attention, end quote. From what I can tell, neither Gahyeon, her mom, or the company addressed the fact that Gahyeon confirmed the rumors before, so I, I sadly can't say anything more about that. Jiho also spoke up saying, quote, It's been hell. This is what you want, right? I love members competed really hard to join the new girl group while you were taking a break. I didn't get into the final debut group and it was the toughest time of my life. The company canceled my contract without conditions. I was trying to pick myself up and restart, but because of your lies, my dreams fell apart. I was lost for words after seeing the post that I bullied you right after you got back from an emergency room. I worried about you. And also, and why would you tag me in posts when the Kako talk wasn't even between you and me? I thought of you as my family. You clearly didn't. I'm going to take legal action. The truth will come out. End quote. Now, firstly, I don't really understand why Jiho is making it seem like it was Mina's fault that she didn't get into Boto Pass or that the company dropped Jiho and canceled the contract because that has nothing to do with Mina. As for legal action, from what I can tell, no legal action has been made against Mina from Jiho. Soyeon, the only member who did not live in the dorms, posted on Gaihyun's Instagram saying, quote, I loved Mina the most among all the members. And the first time I heard that, I wondered if this was something I didn't know. However, Mina's word gradually changed and she lost credibility. Furthermore, I am very concerned about Mina's health. I'm also very shocked by this incident. Mina, please stop here. I'm telling you that there may be a misunderstanding, unquote. Soyeon also shared some cacao chats of them speaking with each other, and if you want to read them, you can. But... It was basically just her showing that they had a good relationship, at least according to Suyan. I will point out that Mina's name on Kakao is dumb. I don't know if this was edited by the Twitter account who posted these screenshots, or if this was an inside joke, or if Suyan just changed the name, but I just found it interesting that that was her name on Kakao. Jiwon also made a short post about this and shared some screenshot of Kakao chats. The lettering so small I can't even see what it says, but according to Bodopass Brazil, they were talking like friends, praising each other and saying they loved each other. From what I can tell, this is all that the members have really said, or at least that's what I can find. I do want to say that the account I got these chats from seemed to dislike Mina and not believe her, so I can't be sure that they're not leaving out any other info. I just feel like I had to add that. Like I mentioned earlier, some fans are using videos of Mina with her I Love members as proof of her lying, which I guess can be used as proof, but keep in mind that these videos that were being shared, for the most part at least, were recorded with the intention of sharing, and it seemed like all of the members were aware they were being recorded. After the group's debut, they have not had a comeback. After a lot of pushback from fans, WKS spoke up on Bodopass's situation very recently. On December 27th, 2021, the company came out with a very lackluster statement. Their full statement reads, quote, First of all, we would like to express the gratitude to the fans who love Bodopass. Since the debut in August of 2020, we remember a lot of support and love from our fans. We think it's natural for our fans to be curious about Bodopass. As Bodopass's comeback is delayed, we are sorry that fans are not only curious but also concerned about Bodopass. We are discussing future plans and we will be able to convey our, our official position in February. Thank you very much for waiting patiently so far and we deeply apologize for not being able to respond earlier. End quote. This update slash statement didn't really give us a lot of information, however, I can give a little bit of context about the reason why the company is saying that they need to give an update in February instead of right now. One of the members of Poropez, Mihi, is currently participating in the NBC survival show My Teenage Girl. The show started in late November of 2021, and according to Wikipedia, the show ends in mid-February. So they probably have to wait because with most of these survival shows, the participants are tied to the show by contract. Now, in this whole chaos, you might be wondering, well, where is Double X? On top of the lackluster statement we got from WKS, we also got a whole comment from Double X Entertainment. A fan page on Instagram have been making templates to contact both of the companies who managed Boto Pass, and under one of these posts, Double X Entertainment actually replied saying, 
Hi, we were with Bodo Pass until the first album broadcast. After that, Bodo Pass team are only with WKS. We cheer for Bodo Pass, but Double X is not with them anymore, so please don't tag us. Thank you. This is a very odd comment, and I feel like they're leaving out a lot. They haven't made any type of statement, like a public statement, on them leaving Bodo Pass. This comment, however, is backed up as the group's Instagram bio only mentions WKS, and WKS is the only company linked in their bio. I also kind of wonder what about the two members that were under Double X Entertainment? Did they move to WKS or have they left the group? I am leaning towards the two members, Ria and Ayun, being under. Under WKS since less than a month ago, Ria posted on Boda Pass's Instagram and Ayun also pretty recently posted on their Instagram as well. I also want to mention that from what I can tell, the members that were involved in the whole bullying situation, Jiwon, Soyeon and Chesang are all still in Boda Pass. At least I am certain about Jiwon and Soyeon as they recently posted on Instagram. I was actually surprised to see that the group is still kind of active on social media and they're kind of going strong like they do in Instagram posts and YouTube stuff and they do have a decent fan base but some people cannot see themselves justifying supporting a group that has alleged bullies in them. But this is gonna be it for this video. I tried to make it as unbiased as possible, showing all sides of the situation. Although, besides the statements by WKS, there wasn't a lot to show from the people actually involved with the situation besides Mina. I wanted to tread carefully be because this was mostly accusations, and since this did not go into court, a lot of proof was not given or publicly available. I will be honest and say that I do stand the victims of bullying as a victim myself, but I do also understand that people can lie that people can misunderstand and people can be mentally ill. I am very curious what you guys think about the situation, so please share your thoughts in the comments. And just please ask no hateful comments towards anyone involved, as this is just allegations from both sides. Besides the allegations by me, I am also very interested in the situation with the companies and the group themselves, and how they're just kind of now speaking up about <laughs> double X just leaving and they aren't being transparent about their involvement with Bodo Pass. So besides the allegations, do you think Bodo Pass is actually going to have a comeback when the two companies aren't even working together? Please share all your thoughts down below. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.